Cabrito is one of my passions and I really, really love it. It takes a long time. It takes technique, you know, and it's like, I want to master this because if you've had a really, really good, well cooked and seasoned cabrito and you just get a corn tortilla, a little bit of salsa. Mm, oh my gosh, baby. it's gonna be a flavor that like, oh gosh. So when you hear somebody's gonna make cabrito, you're going, you know, <laughs> it's just that awesome. Today we're cooking cabrito and this is a very, very special recipe. Cabrito is a suckling goat and this is a traditional and old school ranch recipe that our community always cooks for special occasions. Now I've cooked a lot of cabritos over the years, but in this video, I want to introduce you all to the Cabrito Master, my good friend, Balde Garcia of Profit Barbecue. Balde has a lifelong passion for cooking, grilling, and fabrication, and he fabricates a few different versions of open fire grills, perfect for cooking cabritos. Those open fire grills that you guys always see me cooking on out here, Balde is the mastermind behind those, and today we're using the Pro Pit Javelin to roast this cabrito to perfection. In this video, we're also going to hear from Balde. He'll share a little bit about his life story, how he got started cooking and fabricating, and how that all led him to his awesome shop, the Pro Pit Barbecue Supply Store. We're also gonna show you how we cooked this cabrito and the key things you need to look for if you're cooking one yourself. And of course, y'all gotta stick around to the end because we're gonna tear right into this one as soon as it's cooked perfectly. So let's get this javelin all fired up and cook this cabrito. Vamonos! Valde whipped up a fresh pot of coffee for us. Yeah, nice cup of cowboy coffee. Ooh, that's good. So what's your first memory that you remember being around a fire, cooking, and smelling all those amazing aromas? My father had a barbecue pit, but just like everybody else, and he started barbecuing, and you know he started showing you, and you started getting into it, and then that was your first barbecue pit. He would barbecue a lot of these uh, lower end cuts of meat. They, they were economical, but he made it work. And from when I was eight years old to where I was 27, he had a, a, a meat market, a grocery store meat market. And I remember when fajitas, they used to put them into ground meat. You know, they were 10 cents a pound. Fajitas were literally a, a trash meat. So they started tenderizing them running them through a tenderizer. I remember that. And in there, we also had, we used to cater, we had restaurants, so I learned how to cook, how to butcher, how to process wild game. So you've pretty much been around cooking, around barbecue, we call it carne asada for us carne here in asada. South Texas, right? And then your father had stores, so he probably also put you to work in those stores, am I right? 120 hours a week, you know. It's a mom and pop store, literally a mom and pop store. Mm -hmm. My dad, my mom, me, my sister, we worked there and we worked so many hours trying to make a living. You know, we used to make 200 gallons of menudo and wow, you know, 400 of pounds of barbacoa. We would have some winter Texans come by and they would go to our little restaurant there at the store and they want to know what we had. And I told them, well, we had brains, we had intestines, we had uh, tri-liver cheek meat we had all these mexican <laughs> foods that we eat here and uh, they, they, buy were, it? That's the they, were, they were just kind of looking at me but when they tasted they were like holy cow yeah. this stuff is good whole different eating experience yeah whole different cuisine but i learned a lot there from my mom on how to visar how to make rice beans <coughs> not just barbecue how to cook mexican food how to barbecue i would barbecue seven days a week from seven in the morning till one in the afternoon you know wow. just every day i mean 400 pounds of menudo is definitely nothing to sneeze at. That's a lot of menudo. So that's how you cut your teeth. So take us from your younger years to when you started a fabrication business. I went to Pan American for a semester. I went to TSTI for a semester. That wasn't for me. So I joined the military. I was uh, in the Persian Gulf. When I got out, my dad had just opened his fourth store. Continued working there. And then when I uh, we finally sold that store, I went to go work at a plant in Port Lavaca. I started as a laborer and then a laborer as a helper. And then from a helper to a welder's helper, then a pipe fitter's helper, eventually a welder. As a pipe fitter, you can do pretty much anything, you know. So when I came over here, I made a barbecue pit and then I went on Saturday on the side of the street and I sold it right away. And a little light came up on my head. I took off back home. I made three barbecue pits during the week. And on Saturday, I went and I sold all three. Then with that money, I bought enough to make five pits and pockets of money. I made five, went back on Saturday and sold them. And I was doing that till I was taking 20 pits every Saturday on the weekend to go sell them and I would sell out. And That's pretty cool. it just started selling and selling. So then I took it to the stores. I had like 13 stores that I was supplying. I was making 50 pits a month for five years. 
Wow. I know That's I've made of thousands of pits, 50 pits a month for five years. And then after a while, I started my welding service and doing the barbecue pits, doing both. It just started taking off. Now let's get that cabrito on the grill. First up, the prep process. This isn't a fancy recipe with 100 different ingredients. All we used for this cabrito was a slather of butter and an even coat of OG rub, which is that perfect blend of salt, pepper, and garlic. That's all you need for a delicious cabrito. Next up, we're mounting it on the Pro Pit Javelin. This is a manual rotisserie that's perfect for roasting delicious meats. There's a pole on each side and they're connected by this other rod here in the middle. Now that allows us to string some wire through each side of the cabrito's leg, some in the middle of the animal, and this mounting will set us up for a very thorough and very even cooking process. Now we're just gonna be feeding it small pieces of wood and keep the roasting process low and slow, rotating, rotating. You could say we're flippity flipping until the cabrito's done. How do we know when it's done? Let's hear a little bit more from Balde and then he'll walk us through the important timer that he looks for to cook cabrito perfectly. What I enjoy is sticking to our heritage, teaching and helping people how to cook tripas, menudo, barbacoa, carnitas, whole animals like uh, pigs or, or, or cabritos. That's really what I like, you know, cooking rattlesnake, peach cobbler, span de camp, all that stuff, it's part of our heritage. If we don't pass it on, you know, we lose it. And it's up to us, you know, to show the people how awesome it is to be doing some of this. So hopefully somebody will say, hey, you know what? I remember my grandpa used to do it, you yeah. know, and get back into it. because if we lose part of our heritage, you know, it's gone. I'm also a ranch cook, you know, and you know, different ranches call me to go and cook for them for gatherings or what have you during the hunting season. And usually it's for about five days. I have to come up with my own menu because if I get eight 60 year old guys from New York and I get eight 30 year old guys from Louisiana, that's a different cook. Total contrast. You know, I'll barbecue, baked chicken, meatloaf. So, I mean, I do comfort food, desserts, banana fosters, peach cobblers, and I'll throw in some rattlesnake, some, you know, calabaza con quail, all kinds of snake. stuff. A lot of stuff. <laughs> and I like to give them a little bit of South Texas. Right on, uh, baby. I like it and I enjoy it because it actually keeps me on my, my toes. Keep cooking, keep barbecuing, keep cooking everything. I learned what I did and all of us learn because somebody else taught us something. True. You get that and you try to improve it. So if somebody's out there and they see us cooking, you know, they can get a little bit of influence and then maybe try it themselves. And it may not come out perfect the first time, but then the second time it gets better and the third bit, and guess what? Now you're hooked. Yep. You know? yep. Ask me how I know. <laughs> And I know you told me one time, you have certain little markers that you look for, different stages in the cook. Do you mind sharing that with us? One of the things where you're gonna pick a cabrito, you see the, the kidneys? They're just full of fat. You really can't see the kidneys because it's just covered with fat. That means it's still on milk. Once it gets off the milk and it doesn't get that cholesterol, it starts to lose that fat and then you can see the kidneys and you know that that's not a cabrito. Mm. One of the timers that I like to see when you cook them, the rib bones are red and then they start getting darker. They start getting like, maroon, like what we were seeing here. And then purple. The darker they are, the more done as it is. What you're looking for when that the cabrito is just just about done is the end tips have no red. They're literally dark. That means that the blood in the bone has already cooked and it's black. That's one of the timers that the cabrito has. Another timer that it has on the neck, the spine is the last thing to cook and you're gonna have some blood coming out. So, and it's gonna start seeping out blood. As long as it's seeping out blood, it's not really cooked. And in order to cook this cabrito to where it's perfectly cooked and it's not overdone on the outside and raw on the inside, you have to bring the core temperature up very, very slowly. And the only way of doing that is by cooking it on very, very low heat. I can keep my, my hand here for a long time. And pretty much you're taking this from a raw stage to drying it out, to heating it up, and then start cooking it. If you cook the outside and you, you sear the skin, then the juice is gonna start coming out. Yeah. You start cooking the center, without searing the outside, making like a little shell and keeps all the juices. So as you're turning it, you're keeping all the juices and making sure that you don't get it too hot at a certain spot. If you think that it needs more cooking on this side, you can put it right there and then you can lock it in place. And then you can turn it this way and you lock it in place. And the most important thing on the cabrito is the back. That's where the skin is. That's where you're gonna keep the, the moisture. You wanna be cooking it on the bone side, probably 70, 
percent of the time, 75 percent of the time, so that you don't sear and puncture the, the skin. Cooking on this side most of the time, just back and forth, back, and then once in a while, put it on the back, but most of the time, cooking it bone side down. So when you say dry it out, you're talking about we need to dry out the skin, the exterior skin. I want you to listen to this. Once you see that all of your timers are on point, then you know that it's getting real, real close. Now you wanna to start to sear it a little bit. So you drop it, put a little more heat, and now you start turning it more. And it's gonna to come to a point where the skin is gonna pop. Once the skin is popped, then you start turning it and it's pretty much ready. And you're gonna have a cabrito that, oh my gosh. Yeah. Down here where we're from, it was always the pipe pit. It was just grilling on a pipe pit, either directly or indirectly. What led you to create these open fire grills? I've been cooking cabritos, you know, for 25, 26 years. Mr. Gilbert Mercado. He yes, I remember me. Gilbert. It wasn't until I got invited by Arturo Ramon and uh, Big Hob to go to a place up in uh, Driftwood. Driftwood. Yes, and I, I asked went you to come you. by. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. We went over there. I saw them cooking. What? I used to do a long time ago. Yes, we and used basically to. that just relit a fire and I forgot how awesome it is. I just started hitting it more and more and then I came up with a bullet, the RPG, the javelin, and I went even farther than where I did before. And it's just open fire pits are just awesome. And it's not a new thing. It's been around for a long time. Centuries. It just hasn't been in Forever, this area. Really. I know that I do a cabrito and I see sometimes I see somebody, a couple, and they say, look, honey, that's how uh, grandpa used to do that at the ranch, yeah. remember? But yeah. they don't know anything on how to do it. So every time, me, Arnie, we have some of these demonstrations. People come by and, you know, they can come and they just learn, you know, it's part of our heritage, you know, yeah. just passing it on. I was fortunate, Balde invited me to go with him to that event in Driftwood that Arturo Ramon, Big Hav. And I remember on the way home, <laughs> Balde was all like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> you know, a few weeks later, bam, there they are. You know, he's, he, when he sets his mind on something, he's gonna get it done. We grew up that way, my dad used to cook that way, and, and so it's something that was familiar to us, but we both got into competition cooking, which is all about smoking meat. So we kind of got away from all of that. This has brought us back to our heritage and what we grew up with. And I'm so glad you're doing this so that we can share this with our friends and with other people that are interested. The good thing is that a lot of people do want to learn these things and that's, that's the beauty of it. Look how beautiful, just gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful color. And now, friends, it's time to carve it up. I'm gonna let Balde do it. He's an expert butcher. Yeah, just comes apart. Oh my God, you hear that crunch? Yeah, baby. That's a good one. Mira. It just comes apart. Wait a minute. This part. Hey, that's not fair. <laughs> you wanna take that one apart? Look at that, folks. Incredible, look at that juice. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Oh my gosh. Look, Look at, at that. that. Here, hold on. Oh my goodness. Mmm. 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 And then this part here, this is like the chicharron. Mm. Oh my mm. goodness. Oh my goodness. Mm. I love this outside skin. Mira, this right here. This, sitting down, sitting down under a tree. Oh, baby. <laughs> Mmm. Oh my god. This is probably the best tasting cabrito I've had. Oh mm -hmm. Oh my god. That's incredible. My god. So simple, so delicious. Totally the agree with that. The technique is everything on, on a good juicy cabrito. La kidney. Riñon, la riñonada. Mmm. La riñonada. The kidney. Mm. Mm. Oh my god. Oh. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> that oh, that? We have a special guest. My mama. Mama Tex. Hi. Mama, why don't you taste this cabrito real quick before you, I know you're on the way out. Mm. <laughs> you better take me some food and I come back. We mm. will. We will, Mama. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing, right? Fantastic. And this cabrito turned out super fantastic. Thanks to Balde's extra good cooking skills. I've had a lot of cabrito in my life. I have. 
I've cooked a few myself. I gotta say, about it, this is probably the best one I've ever had. It just, that life, open fire, just a little bit of smoke, just really lit that flavor up. It's fantastic. Thanks, Balde. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna know how to make the best cabrito ever, look this guy up right here. All right, y'all keep the smoke light, make it work.